Hi everyone, Sandman here. Today's video is brought to you by a donation from John, and here's what he has to say. Hi Sandman, from my experience and observations, I find that guys tend to be loners and girls anything but. They always seem to have a support group. They have fellow girls to chat away to usually about nothing of worthwhile importance. Recently I turned down an invitation to go over to a girl's place and watch a movie. Her and I have a history that's about three years in the past. I used to be head over heels for this girl. We hooked up but we never dated. She would also date other guys, but would still fool around with myself. I'd be lying if I said I never cared that we didn't go on a date, but I never pursued the possibility. So when she asked me to come over later, I said yes. I figured I was going to get late, so I jumped on it. We agreed for me to come over later as well. Then I went about my day and I thought about this in the back of my head, and my gut, and I also felt that it was a bad idea. So I told her that I wasn't going to come over, since I thought it was a really bad idea, and I made a dumb mistake. I figured she would see why it was a bad idea since we hadn't kept in touch. As well as that, we most likely don't have any and don't want any feelings for each other anymore. I do not. I got a flashback in a how dare you tone and questions along the lines of did you think I implied anything? To which I just rolled my eyes even though it was over the phone while she went on and on. But back to my original point of guys being loners and girls having a group. It struck me how guys and girls deal with discontent differently, especially when rejected. There are probably exceptions, maybe guys with low testosterone, but guys create or destroy things using alcohol when they feel conflicted and overwhelmed. Girls, on the other hand, seem to dump their emotions, a confusion and frustration come to mind onto others. This is exactly what I thought I knew that she was trying to do to me with her vitriolic garbage. Then she tried spinning that she just wanted me to come over and watch a movie so we could catch up and she didn't want to ruin our friendship, to which I said, fuck off. To put it all together, I came to the half-assed conclusion that girls deal with their emotions by trying to transfer them to other people. When she feels happy, she tries to make other people around her happy. And I can't complain about that. My thoughts are that guys do the same when we feel good. But when a girl doesn't, she tries, perhaps unconsciously, to make others feel like her, essentially bringing them down. Whereas the guy, we isolate ourselves because we don't want to bring others down. That's how I've always felt, and that's how I've noticed things for my friends. I'd like to know what you think on this particular matter, and I figure that you could articulate things better and even add to my points, and I assume that you also agree. If you don't agree, then I'd love to hear why. Best wishes. Well, John, thanks for your donation as well as your interesting topic. I always used to think that when a woman is using a man as an emotional tampon, it's similar to the situation where one crab in the bucket is trying to prevent all the other crabs from getting out. But in the case of women venting to others, more specifically men, it's like they are actually reaching out of that bucket and reaching across the room and trying to drag some other pool soul into it. It's like instead of just telling us briefly what happened in their day and allowing us to empathize with them, they want us to suffer just as much as they do. This to me shows a complete lack of empathy. When we as men take our downtime from the cruel world around us, we oftentimes like to sit alone at home in front of our computer or gaming console letting the toxic emotions dissipate from our systems. We don't want to spread them to other people because that would be wrong. And if we're forced to interact with others when we don't want to, we usually get very cranky and mean. I've also found that women treat men and other women very differently when it comes to emotional baggage. They seem to use men as emotional dumping grounds, attempting to lower us to their level as you mentioned. But they also seem to dump their emotional baggage on their female friends by insulting them with compliments. And finally, they seem to take their emotional garbage out on children by taking away their lollipops and spanking them or taking power from them. Mind you, a child needs discipline, but many women cross the line between discipline and cruelty because of this particular issue of empathy. To show everyone what I mean by women insulting each other with compliments, I'm actually putting a link in the description to a very short video from The Family Guy. This link was sent to me from one of my viewers for my Running Away From Women video that I did about two or three weeks back. It's really weird to watch women dump their emotional baggage on each other while still smiling about things and being polite. This just shows me that they hate each other and use each other as emotional dumping grounds and the game seems to be about looking like it's not getting to them. This could be very similar to the way that guys tease each other, but it could just be the feminine way instead. If a woman is having a casual conversation with another woman and she feels bad about something, then she might just insult that woman that's there with her, but she might wrap it up in a compliment. So then the other woman feels bad as well, so she dumps the emotion back on her friend. It's like a game of ping pong or table tennis, hitting the negative emotion back and forth between two women. One woman doesn't want to absorb another woman's bad emotions. That seems to be what men are for. A good example of this is when a woman puts you in the friend zone and then uses you as an emotional tampon and you the man just listens and internalizes everything that she says. But you never react or respond to her. You just let her use you as a dump site and then you go home and let the negative energy leave you over the next few hours or days for some men. 
When women, especially clients, try guilting me or shaming me or calling me to cry of a river about their situation, I show them in my tone of voice and lack of enthusiasm that I don't want to listen to their petty problems, and I refuse to empathize with them. I find the moment you act unemotional and refuse to empathize to women, they often back off because they know that they can't bring you down to their own emotional level. So that's when they go someplace else to make some other guy feel bad. It's like the only way a woman can feel good about her bad experiences is to make the man feel bad as well. John, with regards to the woman that you were hooking up with, you rejected her and this made her angry because, in her mind, she used to be pretty enough to attract you and you used to come chasing her like a dog. But now you refused her and this really damaged her self-esteem. You're probably the one guy that she's attracted to and wants to have sex with, but is more interested in using some other guys for their resources. She sounds like one of those women that keeps a stable full of men. One to fix her car and computer, another one to take her out and pay her bills, and you were the guy that she used to keep her pipes clean. And I'm not talking about the ones in her bathroom, unless you're into some freaky stuff. You were the hardest guy to find. The other guy she can replace with beta male orbiters, but for her to find a good looking man that will service her when she needs it is hard if that guy is in demand from other women. You sound like a man with options, and you exercised one of those options to get away from her, and she didn't like it. I wouldn't be surprised if you're not allowed into her bedroom ever again. Or she could even be looking for a replacement right now. Hell hath no fury like a woman scorned. With regards to my male friends, we often sit around and discuss how to solve our problems, and we brainstorm creative solutions that might work for us. We don't sit around insulting each other in sneaky yet happy ways. We don't use each other as emotional toilets, tampons, and diapers. This is something that women will never be able to understand because they deal with their negative emotions by becoming extroverted, while men become introverted when we deal with our bad feelings. We have to go away for a while and blow off some steam or let the negative energy dissipate from our bodies, some guys more than others. Some men drink while dealing with their feelings, and the alcohol just releases a man's true feelings. And I have to be honest that when I drink, I often get angry and want to start a soccer riot, and I don't even like sports. I can also understand why repressed men in England start riots when drinking, and the same goes for here in Canada. There are riot police with horses in the streets preventing us from riding on a Friday night, and the liquor is tightly controlled. In the States, in places like Vegas and New Orleans, you can drink in the streets, and people don't try to burn the place down. I think Americans are far less repressed than others, and most seem far more talkative, and more often they say things that are on their mind. John, this girl you were talking about sounds really sexually frustrated, and by saying it in the end that she still wants you to come over and watch a movie, that's pretty much what proved it to me. That means she still really likes you, and she probably sees you as a higher status value male than all the others. So you'll probably still be able to sleep with her if you want. But what I really want to know about is why you felt a gut feeling when you did. Here was a seemingly no-strings-attached situation for sex, and something spooked you. I'd really like to know what that was. And with regards to emotional garbage, I don't let any woman dump it on me anymore. Not even my own mother. Every time I see her, she's shaming me and guilting me, and I've turned off my behavioral filter. I've told her how I feel. Sometimes she asks me why I'm not dating anymore, and I throw the question back as to why would I want to complicate my life. Then she gets angry. I tell her it's my life, and I don't want to get married. She's also dumping her emotional garbage on my father, and he just takes it and takes it. He adapts by watching television so much that he's literally watching television sometimes when she's criticizing him. He's trying to escape into his own mind when the emotional garbage starts to flow. And sometimes he tries dumping it on myself because he doesn't have enough free time to get rid of it all by himself. And I respond by getting angry and confrontational right away. That's me saying, go ahead, dump your emotional crap all over me, but I'll dump three times as much back, so you're welcome and keep doing it if you want. You'd think that he'd stop by now, but he doesn't. He keeps trying over and over again. I don't like dumping negative emotions on my mother and father, but if I don't stop them, then they'll basically keep trying to do it more often than not. A line has to be drawn somewhere. Women I find don't seem to have that emotional line, as many of them are willing to sit there for an hour or two, repeating their negative experiences over and over again to you. And if I don't get annoyed by what happened to them and become empathetic, then they will often irritate me to the point where I'm annoyed that they won't stop talking about their issue. If they feel bad, others have to feel bad. But when they feel good, do they share their positivity with men? Of course they don't. They hang out with their female friends when times are good, and spend more time with us men when times are bad. They seem far too eager to share the good things in life with their girlfriends, but at the same time they talk about their problems with us. As a man, when you do a good job for her, she'll tell her friends that you're a great man, but criticizes you to her face, and asks you why you can't do more nice things more often. Who wants to be the emotional do-rag for a 300-pound woman? Certainly not myself. Yet that's what it feels like whenever a woman feels the urge to tell me about how terrible her life is and how she's suffering. And in typical female fashion, even if you shared the solutions with her, she wouldn't want to implement those solutions. Most likely she wants you to feel bad enough for her so you'll just go out and implement those solutions yourself on her behalf. 
The bottom line is this, that with women it's garbage in and garbage out, and with men it's garbage in and we compact that shit ourselves and take it to the dump. But if there's an emotional backlog, then you too start dumping your emotional garbage onto others as well. Anyways, that's all I have to say for today. Thanks again, John, for your donation as well as your interesting perspective on why women use women as well as us for emotional tampons. As for everyone else out there, please follow me on Twitter or like me on Facebook to get tomorrow's video today. Thanks for taking your daily dose of red pills. And remember, a red pill a day keeps the toxic femininity away. So enjoy the rest of your day, and cheers.